Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to talk about a cosmological paradox known as the Olbers paradox. The simple question here is this, why is the sky dark? Welcome to What The Math and you're going to find out very soon why. <laughs> So back in the 18th century, a German uh, astronomer by the name of Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers looked into the dark sky at night and asked himself a question. So why exactly is the night sky so dark? If the universe was finite, if the universe had a specific size and if the universe was filled with different stars, it should technically be bright. It should technically have a star everywhere, no matter where I point. And if you actually point at different stars here, you'll always find stars to, uh, to actually be able to uh, select. And so for this reason, this uh, paradox is also known as the dark night sky paradox. Basically, it sort of conflicts with the assumption that the universe is static or that it's um, infinite. If the universe is infinite, there should be stars everywhere. It should actually look something like this. I'm going to show it to you as I increase the magnification here. This should, what, uh, this should be the actual, you know, view of our uh, universe, of our night sky. But it's not, and it's actually going to crash my computer if I, do, if I keep doing this. It's not. It actually looks like this. Why? And one of the explanations for this paradox, and let's actually start moving away from our planet so I can maybe explain it to you a little bit more visually, is that, well, uh, first of all, this is one of the reasons we've discovered that it's very likely that the universe is actually expanding, and there was something called the Big Bang, which basically uh, started to expand the universe, and uh, basically uh, some of the farther objects in our night sky have moved away out of a distance where we can actually see them. In other words, some of the farther objects in the universe are now invisible to us. So that's one of the explanations, and this is one of the so-called evidences of the uh, Big Bang model, and basically uh, probably one of the strongest evidence for the Big Bang theory. In other words, one of the only reasons why the night sky is full of darkness, as you can see right here, is essentially because some of these galaxies and stars have expanded beyond the horizon and we can't really see them anymore. But originally, when the universe was still young, you could most likely see a very, 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 very bright night sky that I will try to demonstrate again uh, by increasing magnification. Although it might not work as well here because we're now in the intergalactic space. So here there really isn't that uh, much I can uh, magnify. But if I were to go to one of the um, other galaxies here, which we'll just pick based on their brightness, let's go to this one right here. This one looks pretty bright. Let's move closer to it, go inside, and try to demonstrate this idea again. So this galaxy right here, we're going to go in the middle of it. And so here the night sky looks kind of similar to the night sky from planet Earth. But if the universe did not have a Big Bang, if it was not expanding, if nothing was really uh, moving away from us, it would be a lot brighter. It would actually be insanely bright. To the, to the point where things would heat up so much that um, electrons and protons and neutrons would not be able to actually maintain their stability anymore. This would eventually turn into superheated space. But we don't have that. As a matter of fact, none of it is superheated. This is what we actually see. And not surprisingly, this idea was mentioned by other scientists and other uh, philosophers as well. As a matter of fact, this paradox is very, very well known, and even the poet Edgar Allan Poe mentioned this as well in one of his uh, stories. And one of his explanations was that, um, well, it's very likely that the universe is just finitely old, basically it has a certain age, and uh, because uh, the speed of light is also limited, um, you can only really see so many stars within a given volume of space from Earth. So in other words, he had a pretty good explanation for why we can't really see all of the stars, even though technically there should be a star no matter where you point in space, which technically there is. But what we have discovered today, though, is that, uh, well, it's not as empty and as dark as we actually think. As a matter of fact, there are, there's quite a lot of remnants from the Big Bang. There's quite a lot of um, background radiation that we currently refer to as the cosmic microwave um, background radiation. 
and um, a lot of it has been redshifted over time and a lot of it is pretty much everywhere so no matter where you point in space you'll actually see this radiation and so the night sky is not that it's actually dark it's just uh, a lot of the light is invisible to us it's usually infrared it's usually in very very low frequencies and so most of this is actually covered in light from um, from the Big Bang and from the uh, the actual birth of the universe but of course there are other explanations to this as well and um, one of the explanations that maybe it's just that the stars have finite age and uh, by now many stars have actually died and don't produce any light where they used to be uh, placed in space that of course um, was a pretty reasonable explanation back in the days but today we know that there's uh, just so many galaxies and so many stars out there that it would actually be quite impossible not to have some kind of an object somewhere at a distance even though if it was pretty far away from earth no matter where you point you should be able to find a star of some sort and on top of that we know today that uh, even though the stars have finite age many new stars are made uh, pretty much every second in, um, in the universe and uh, many of these stars as they are produced are being placed in these regions of space that would otherwise be dark so in that sense this explanation is not particularly uh, satisfactory and so really the only true explanation to this so-called um, Olbers paradox is uh, something that we've discovered in 2016 and it's actually going to be mentioned in the next video in more detail but what we've discovered is that there is actually a lot more stuff out there that we just can't see as a matter of fact I'm going to go to the end of observable, uh, observable universe and I'm going to demonstrate it to you in a little bit more uh, visual way and so here we are this is pretty much the end of observable universe you can barely kind of tell some galaxies apart here and we're currently at a distance of approximately uh 24.2 billion light years away from our um our galaxy which is in this direction now right around here this is not exactly the end of the universe this is just the end of the observable universe the universe that we can kind of see because um obviously the universe is limited in terms of age we know that the age of the universe is somewhere around 13.7 ish billion um, years and so this is um sort of the distance that the light traveled to our galaxy but um there is a lot of galaxies that are beyond this region and i'm going to tell you in the next video how many exactly there are but uh, there are so many as a matter of fact that most of them are just not visible to us yet in time they will come into view and they'll be visible on our planet earth but right now because the universe is still kind of growing and because the universe is still technically not very old they're not visible in billions of years we might see more and more stars and actually maybe in billions of years the star might even become brighter um, it was much brighter during the big bang and a little bit uh, after the big bang but right now it's dark but it might become brighter with time because many more galaxies and many more stars will appear and for as long as these galaxies stay um, around and as long as they produce more stars we'll actually be able to maybe even see more of them but for now we just have to be satisfied with what we can actually see and you know what this is actually quite a lot of stuff in the next video i'm going to talk more about what we've discovered about uh, these unusual invisible galaxies somewhere out there beyond our scope but today this is going to be the end of this video and let's actually return back to our own solar system and possibly at least our own galaxy for now um, and just take a look at what the night sky looks like from this perspective this is in the center of our galaxy and here as you can see the night sky is a lot a lot brighter a lot brighter than on our own planet earth because on our planet earth it looks a little bit different it looks a lot darker and this is because we are actually located on the outskirts of our own galaxy the milky way and anyway, so thank you so much for watching. And if you still haven't subscribed, do subscribe because there's so many more educational videos coming in the future. In one of the next videos, we're going to talk more about the universal questions and the paradoxes that we are currently struggling with. But most importantly, we're going to talk about the new discoveries of space sciences and other sciences as well. Please subscribe, support this channel on Patreon if you have a few bucks to spare because it does help me create better videos and uh, buy better equipment also don't forget there's actually a twitter channel where you can always contact me i reply almost right away there's a facebook group and of course i now have snapchat where i just kind of fool around and teach you stuff randomly i'll see you guys in the next video
Give me later. And as always, bye bye. Goodbye, Milky Way. You're absolutely gorgeous.